Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're all doing well out there. Good to have you back, man. Um, so My pleasure. You're moving away, moving away from – without having the Bitcoin debate, uh, you wanted to give a few examples of DeFi. And then if you can also give an overview again, because we had a lot of people join in the last um, you know, 20, 30 minutes, after we define DeFi 1.0 versus 2.0 versus what everyone's talking about, which is DeFi 3.0. If you can also define that, that would be great. I think you guys are wasting a lot of time naming things instead of understanding the things. It's, you're eating a lot of overhead to just assign things you're going to argue about later. So cryptocurrency was invented to remove counterparty risk. You know, Satoshi in the white paper, or rather in the Genesis block, quotes that the banks are bailing, being bailed out by the governments again. And so you have socialized losses, but privatized gains. And so... Bitcoin's birth was to get rid of the counterparty risk. That is somebody just printing money forever, making yours worth nothing. And so these are the world's most expensive, slowest databases. They're garbage. They have no throughput. They're buggy. You have to check to see whether your transaction got orphaned off or forked off or didn't get put through because a block was full or, you know, it, there's all types of horror. Like, so we put up with that horror because we have to in order to have censorship resistance. And so the only thing any blockchain is useful for is censorship resistance, period. If your project doesn't need censorship resistance, go run it on AWS like everyone else does. Amazon is 50% of all the commerce in the United States and the internet, and they don't use the blockchain at all. They'll sell it to you, but they don't use it and they don't need it and they don't want it because they don't have censorship problems. So, you know, that, that idea, that concept basically just eliminates like the majority of projects in crypto, right? They're just like, they're, they're just basically virtual gambling. They're virtual roulette wheels, but instead of having numbers on the roulette wheel, you have ticker symbols for coins. So <clears throat> if it is the case that the only thing that blockchains are good for is censorship resistance and that they only exist for one useful purpose, which is to remove counterparty risk, then I will list you some places where they successfully perform that function in ways that we've never seen before. So let's take uh, Coinbase. Coinbase got sued by the uh, government because some of its employees were front running listings. They knew the listings were gonna occur, they bought up the tokens, then the listings would happen and then they've dumped the tokens and make a lot of money. Well, uh, you don't have that problem on Uniswap because there's no central Uniswap database of what's going to be listed next. And so there's no insiders that get to front run that information. There's also no team of people at Uniswap that decides whether you get to be listed or not. And I can assure you, there's a team of lawyers that sit at Coinbase to decide whether you get to get listed or not. And that is the opposite of why cryptocurrency was invented, because that is a middleman. That is someone's D who you have to suck in order to participate in the market. And markets work better when there's less friction, less overhead, less middlemen, less counterparty risk. And so what DeFi <clears throat> and cryptocurrency did was gave people the miracle of being able to control their own keys, control their own finance, never have to beg someone else for your money, and then they threw it right in the garbage. They gave their keys to other people and then they become one of the headlines. And so if you go on my Twitter and you go back years ago, you know, three, four years ago, you're going to be see, see me saying, you don't have to be one of the headlines. Stop giving other people your coins. Stop giving your money to other people that say they're going to give you yield. You're going to be one of these headlines when they get exploited or run away with all the money. And, but people don't listen. And so they lose all their money. So let me give you some examples of things which do not have admin keys, do not have counterparty risk. Uh, they do have smart contract risk. So you need to make sure that the smart contract operates well, is well audited. And that's the best you can do as far as software goes. You know, one of the funny things I hear in cryptocurrencies, people say, and it's a nice soundbite, I use it myself, what do you trust more, men or math? And that one sounds better than like, what do you trust more, men or code? Because anyone that's ever actually done software development, it's like, ah, I don't know about that code. A little harder to trust. <laughs> Math's a little bit easier to trust. Uh, code is a lot harder to trust, which is why you see so many people with hacked and destroyed projects. So here's some, some specific instances of miraculous, glorious 
decentralized finance really killing it in the real world. You may have heard of Uniswap. I made it popular on my back. I promoted Uniswap more than their founder did. So Hayden Adams versus me, I did a lot more to promote Uniswap than he did. And my project, Hex, <clears throat> which is the world's first time deposit, another DeFi thing, which also has no admin keys and has had flawless operation for a thousand days, it made Uniswap popular and was a majority of volume and um, liquidity on that platform for a month or two in the very beginning. So, but wouldn't you, but Richard, just quickly about Uniswap, wouldn't you be concerned? You know, it's decentralized, there are no regulators. So, while there's insider trading on Coinbase and other counterparty risks, regulators, you know, do a better job than a decentralized protocol at avoiding no, scams. They don't. Most scams. No, they don't. Most scams, most scams do launch on a DEX. No, but like, oh. you, okay. First of all, <clears throat> okay. The government sucks at everything that it does. If you look around your house right now, everyone listening, look around your house and point to things that you like and then see whether they were created by governments or companies. Traffic lights. Created by companies. They're created by companies every fucking time. They're installed crazy. by I mean, I, I agree that the government can go way out of bounds, but they do things like, you know, pave roads. I mean, the government doesn't create the asphalt, but somebody's got to approve if lying you, down. Yeah, so I, are I you, wanna, are I you, are you kidding argument. right now? Surely you're kidding. I said, look but around no, but, your room and point to stuff that the government made. And you're like, you literally, you're like, no, I'm going to go outside to the road. Like, bro, what do you think before the U.S. got, like, do you think they didn't have roads before the government? Well, I have, a window. I have a window. I looked out of it. I'm sorry. I didn't understand the question. Okay. But if, you know, but Richard, if you look at, but if you go to countries that have a, a, a government, you know, imperfect governments, <clears throat> they're obviously a much worse place to live than, than, you know, the, countries the, that have more powerful governments. The, the stuff that you guys are saying is so unbelievably stupid. It's hurting me. And, and I'm going to prove to you how stupid what you're saying is. It's abysmally <laughs> okay. stupid. Okay? okay. Your thesis, your thesis is that government good private business bad. So let's extend that. Idea. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, you no, go to the no, mall no, no. and the only open, things allowed for sale are the shit open. the government says can sell, be allowed for sale. Are you crazy? That's a terrible idea. I mean, they tried Richard, that in communist Russia. Richard, that's a straw man argument. The argument here by Peter, even though I think it could be conveyed by her, is that there are public goods which governments can fulfill. I'm a libertarian like you, and I do agree. What are you talking about? No one's talking about public goods. They're trying That's to put the government in control of what you can buy on the internet. In this case, magical tokens. Look, That's their I, I thesis. Peter, look, when you asked your question about what is around you, it's produced by the government that you like. I think that's what Peter was answering. That's, that's a all. clarification. It was a bit of a simplification on my part, but perhaps you can refine your question. I heard the question to be, look around. Let me, and I, 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 forgive me for asking what I thought was a rhetorical question. I will just make the statement myself. No one needs to answer. All the good stuff that you like in your life, the things that you put on your body, the cars that you drive, the food that you eat, the house that you stay in was created by a company. All of it. Every good thing in your life, except for the street lights, I guess he's in for Halloween dressing up like a, like a light post or something. Every single thing in your life that's good was created by a company. Period. And when you, when you, you allow the government to decide what people are allowed to buy or not, you'd completely destroy capitalism 100%. And what you replace it with is called communism, literally. Like you guys are literally arguing for communism instead of Richard, the free market. Richard. Richard, that's a quick question. How did you get from me saying Uniswap is good and remove counterparty risk to now I have to defend capitalism? This doesn't make any sense. Okay. Yeah, so, Richard, this my, doesn't my make question, any sense. My question to you is would you trust a company based in the US or based in, let's say, no, no, no. some African guys, country or Russian? You guys are screwing this up right now. Okay. You asked me good examples of decentralized finance actually making a difference in the world. I told you Uniswap, and you started getting me into capitalism versus communism. Nope, I'm not falling for it. The question right, so let's is, go, let's go what back is DeFi to, let's go back doing to Uniswap. now? DYDX I'm a, I'm a, lets you do margin trading now, okay? You can take on leverage now at a decentralized exchange, and if they decide to run away with the money, you can go write your own front end to try and get your money back out before the liquidation bot gets you. That's still better than what you get with these centralized exchanges, okay? If you, if you decide to jack people for their money, you still have, uh, what do you call it? 
is Tornado Cash. Tether decided they weren't going to seize the funds from Tornado Cash. USDC decided they weren't going to blacklist the funds from Tornado Cash. You still have Tornado Cash. I feel sorry for the hackers that hacked on the Bitcoin side because they got caught for their the, basically zero knowledge proofs are superior to ring signatures. And so currently the state of the art in, in anonymity and privacy is still Tornado Cash, right? So Tornado Cash is awesome decentralized finance tool. Uniswap is an awesome decentralized finance tool. They both have no admin keys. They both have decentralized front ends and IPFS. They're both awesome as hell. I suggest everyone use them, except I'm not sure about Tornado Cash now. Like if, if it's on the sanctions list, you, you should be very careful about that. Um, and, and these things work awesome today. And, and not to show my own project, but my thing's been working perfect for a thousand days and directly lets you mint yield and is still up 250X versus Bitcoin, 70X versus Ethereum. I don't know what you want. And a thousand extra is the dollar. So the point I was making about Uniswap, and let me know if you disagree. There are still imperfections, in, and I'm a supporter of DeFi. Um, just I'm, I'm on I'm the same side as you, but I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Isn't there flaws in DeFi that are still being worked on? As a concept, it makes sense. But again, the point no. of Uniswap, the scams I don't know being what you launched guys on are Uniswap. About. What does that have to do with technology? People are people are performing scams with paper and pen and cars and electricity too. Like in, in, in what planet do you start removing technologies from people because criminals use them? Criminals speak language too. Let's get rid of language. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Technology is good for humanity as long as the humans are by and large good. If the humans are by and large bad, then you can make the argument that technology is bad. But in fact, the majority of humans are good people trying to do good things and therefore technology helps all of those people. And when you try and start crippling the criminals by crippling the technology, you do much greater harm preemptively to all the people. Like, think, look at it this way. What's the, what's the Treasury's department like job? Like, what, why are they censoring the North Korean people? Because they're trying to get them to stop scamming. Hey, stop scamming North Koreans. Stop robbing people. Stop, stop doing malware attacks or whatever you're doing to try and generate revenue. And so what did they do? They preemptively screwed everyone else. They did worse to everyone else than the North Koreans did. They caused more harm than the North Koreans did by attacking a tool that every honest business needs to actually use. Every honest business needs to hide the prices it pays its suppliers from its customers. It needs to hide the values it pays its employees from its other employees. It needs to hide its customer list. You cannot do any of those things without mixing, period. Fucking period. Sorry for cursing. So, That's right. so, 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 the, so what's your, we, go ahead. You need mixing, you need mixing for capitalism. You need, uh, Uniswap for capitalism. You need people to be able to list things for sale with no counterparty risk, with no middlemen. You don't have to beg Coinbase to list you. you like it's, it's such amazing innovation is working so well. I don't know how it's not obvious. Like th this is, I, I would say that Uniswap might be a more important invention than Bitcoin, literally. Because I one just Uniswap. attempted to do currency. I yeah, Uniswap's amazing. I love it. It's amazing. I love Uniswap. That's a good example, actually. Monero is another one. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole other drawer. Uh, no, it's um, important. Look, it's important. If more people accepted Monero, then it would be a great innovation because privacy is a human right. It's a human right, period. But people don't treat it like such. It's disgusting. So my last question to you, Richard, just to end the DeFi segment, because you started about an hour and a half ago. Okay, um, look, ready? Let me give you some more. Stable coins, right, necessary for business. We have them Agreed. in DeFi. DAI works, it's DeFi. Now, I wish it wasn't backed so, by so much USDC, but hey, you know, it works, right? You want to get de-risked? You don't have to beg Coinbase to let you send your coins to turn them into to, to their version of a stable coin, which is their counterparty risk USDC thing they show on your screen that you don't know what's actually backed by at all but you do know that usdc is backed by dollars because they they are audited so we have stable DeFi stable coins time deposit hex uh uniswap trading dydx margin and it's just like it does all the things you want like the vast majority of commerce the vast majority of finance is not currency there's only five trillion in printed currency, there's seven trillion in time deposits, and there's buttloads more trillion in derivatives. And like, DeFi is amazing, and it works great now. And it's been working great for 
a couple of years now, and I don't know how anyone could say anything against it. Look at the size of the order books and the thickness of the order books. I mean, you could dump $100 million of Ethereum and, and eat like 1% slippage. Actually, I'll give you a number for that uh, since, since I'm bragging about it. I'll give you a number for how much slippage you get on a $100 million Ethereum dump. <clears throat> ETA, 40 seconds. And, and while you're doing that, Richard, to end it with this question, where do you see DeFi over the next, uh, in, let's say, 24 months or even 12 months? How do you well, see it just it? keeps getting better. How do you like see every, it everything... and do, you, do you see? Do you see the traditional guys start embracing oh, further? And, oh, and by the way, you know, er, earlier everyone was talking about Celsius paying off their their Ave loans. That's just more DeFi. So, like, you could have you could have got yield on your exactly. crypto by sticking an Ave, and it kept kept working fine. Or you could have given it to to the fake DeFi, the CeFi scum, who I have faced down on live stream and then like told him to his face, you know, you're the opposite of why crypto is invented. And guess what? One of them went bankrupt and one of them's doing fine. It's so obvious. Avi is working fine. Hex is working fine. Compound's working fine. Dai is working fine. A ton of stable coins are working fine. Uniswap's working fine. Everything's working awesome. The only thing that sucks is that people launch scams, which they do everywhere. There's no shortage of scams across legacy finance and crippling the technology won't solve that. Uh, you know, like, how, what else, what more do you want? It does all the things. DeFi is amazing. Peter, I, got, I know you got your hand up, so we'll wrap it up, Peter. I'll give you the oh, mic. By, by the way, we... like, my estimate on the 100 million dump was, uh, was wildly wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Either what's, that or it's just number? not dealing. I mean, so, like, if you dumped a million, oh, I know why. I'm sorry. I, I did it backwards. Hold on. I, it's not, it's probably not wildly wrong at all. 100 million... You would you would eat a slippage of two point three eight percent. I'm amazing, Peter, by I the way. What an amazing human I am. <laughs> you could dump a hundred billion dollars of Ethereum and only get two point three eight percent slippage. Go try that in any other market, bro. You know what? Go buy Coinbase stock. Go buy ticker symbol C O I N and let me know how much slippage you get when you try and dump a hundred million of it. Lol. Peter, I'll give you the mic to wrap it up. Thanks, Mario. Um, you know, I, I mostly agree, Richard. Traffic lights aside, I think we're simpatico on almost everything here. Uniswap is a massive innovation, and it enables self-custody. And people need to learn that shouting about the primacy of centralized exchanges is not going to help anybody, because then it's just a whole race to get approval from uh, our overlords. So the idea of self-custody and minimally viable communities is not going away. And yeah, there's going to be shakeouts where the scam artists and the pump and dumps, like, they come and they go. But eventually, they'll find it harder and harder and harder to extract that capital because people will have a language where they can understand these things better and recognize a scam coming from a mile away rather than just FOMOing in. So DeFi is here to stay, and uh, we ain't going nowhere. And, and the other um, thing people can understand is, like, Uniswap token has nothing to do with the Uniswap thing. Uniswap has functioned perfectly fine without its duct-taped-on token because people decide to speculate on the duct-taped-on thing. It, it has no effect on the underlying thing. Uniswap 1 worked awesome. Uniswap V2 works awesome. Uniswap V3 works awesome. And, and all these duct taped on tokens, you don't need to participate in them. They're not, they're not like these things. So what, the reason I say this is because you're talking about like minimum viable community. You don't need a minimum viable community for Uniswap. As long as there's one LP that put a little bit of money and anyone wants to trade against it, that's it. That's all you need. Two humans or, or two entities, an LP and anyone that wants to trade. No minimum viable community needed, you know, like I don't want people to confuse DeFi